Yeah, we love we love that same mindset of just kind of figuring out, okay, what are my goals? What's important to me? And then how much money do I need to set aside each month to achieve those goals? And then once you have that checked off, then it's freeing, exactly as you said. So now we can really open up and enjoy the rest of the funds, however we see fit, because we know that those those goals are checked off. And really, we just wanted to start off by learning a little bit more about what is Money Mike and the Gang. Well, Money Mike and the Gang is a children's series of books that basically teaches kids about money. And what we did is we created four different characters. Money Mike is kind of the main guy in our first book, Money is Easy, is just basically kind of giving some of the fundamental principles of handling money. One thing that we learned when we were teaching financial courses, we used to do 10 week financial courses for adults is that we'd always hear when we first started off, oh, budgeting so hard and finances are so hard and investing so hard. So I hear it's hard, hard, hard. So we want to say, no, you need to change the way you think. What's well, coming out of your mouth? And that's where we came up with money is easy. So starting kids off with the idea that, hey, money is easy. That's really good. And so you, you felt like, the parents that you were teaching, since they had that mindset, that mindset was kind of passed down to the next generation? Yeah. I mean, everything I think with money is that way. I mean, I grew up in a house where, you know, you've got a mortgage on the house, the cars have debts, you got debt on the washing machine through Sears and your TV's financed and everything's financed. You grew up financing is normal. You know, I went to college. The first thing I did is got a student loan, went to the bookstore They give you an application for a student credit card. It just seems normal. You know, so when you grow up in a country that's trillions of dollars in debt, and your family's in debt, it's normal. So I think, you know, to make a change in that, you have to retrain the way people think, the way they rehandle their money, and most importantly, the way they teach their kids. And, and so what are some of those principles in Money is Easy? Well, we kind of broke it down into four different categories, and that's why we have the four different characters as well, too. It's save, tithe, invest, and give. So, you know, creating some type of an emergency savings, you know, 80% of America doesn't even have a thousand dollars in savings. So that's a real problem. You know, somebody's washer and dryer breaks down, a car breaks down, you know, it becomes a financial crisis. So saving from the aspect of having an emergency saving, and then from there, taking it to an investment perspective, you know, the different ways to invest. Um, And then, so we have a character called Giving Grace, and she teaches all about giving. So as far as, you know, giving your money to help out others and then also giving of your time, giving of love, giving of blood, whatever those may be. You know, sometimes people just kind of get, I think, pigeonholed in just one way of giving, but there's obviously a lot of other ways that you can give as well, too. So once again, you know, teaching kids that, you know, when you're blessed and you're got an abundance of finances about it's about helping other people out as well, too. It's not about just getting it and keeping it all to yourself. It's about yeah. you know, getting and helping others, but also, you know, teaching others. That's the one thing that we've found most importantly, you know, we have a profitable business. We also have a nonprofit business and helping out others. A lot of times that mentality of people who need, is just about give me, give me, give me, give me, you know, so there's nothing that's ever been installed in them that helps them you know, to be able to provide for themselves and to be able to give as well, too. So it's a mindset that I think that needs to be taught. You know, there's the parable, I guess it is, that you give a man a fish feeding for a day, teach him how to fish feeding for a lifetime. I think that's a really important principle when it comes to money and teaching people how to be self-sufficient. Then one of our characters that we have is the loan shark. And that whole book is devoted to staying out of debt. So the loan shark, basically, he's the bad guy. You know, you always want to have a bad guy in your series. And so he's trying to entice kids to get into debt. And then Money Mike is always there with the other plan on teaching kids how to stay out of debt. And that was one of, I think, one of the biggest problems that Angela and I faced when we came out of bankruptcy about 20 years ago is we were in this mode of hyper consumption. You know, and as we started making more money, we went into more debt because you think, oh, I can, my credit's extended. I get another credit card. I can get a bigger house loan. I can get a bigger car loan. You know, it's like extend, extend, extend. Yeah. And you just keep spending and spending and spending. And a lot of times the people that I talk to that are in a financial problem, it's usually not a money making problem. It's a money spending problem. 
they get into that hyper consumption mode. And so it's just a matter of kind of, you know, taking a look overall at where they're spending their money, putting a budget together and then putting some control factors on that. And that's one thing, you know, a lot of people, I think, like we were saying, how they have a perception that, you know, money is hard. They think that a budget is very restrictive. And what I like to teach people is that a budget is actually just the opposite. It's very freeing because once you allocate all the various categories of where your money is going to go and you know where it's going to go at the end of the month, you know, where you're going to end up versus yeah. if you just spin and spin and spin and you have no idea. Then you get, you know, to the first, the fourth week and you're like, oh man, I owe this much on these bills and I only have this much coming in on my paycheck or whatever. And you know, you're in trouble. So yeah, we love, we love that same mindset of just kind of figure out, okay, what are my goals? What's important to me? And then how much money do I need to set aside each month to achieve those goals? And then once you have that checked off, then it's freeing exactly as you said. So now we can really open up and enjoy the rest of the funds, however we see fit, because we know that those, those goals are checked off. Yeah. Like I said, you know, that's the kind of a retraining of the mind realizing, Hey, a budget is really going to help me. It's not just putting me in shackles and handcuffs where I can't do anything. And when you have that budget as well too, then that allows you to be able to spend appropriately for the other items that we just met. Uh, mentioned savings, investing, giving, all those type of things, because you can incorporate it into your budget. And sometimes people say, well, I don't have enough money to give. I don't have enough money to save. I don't have enough money to invest. And so what I like to do is encourage people, start off with something very small, but just make sure that you're doing it in all those areas. I don't care how small it is that you're getting. If you're giving a dollar, you're saving a dollar and you're investing it all, just start somewhere because it's a retraining of the mind. It's a you know, getting yourself organized and getting into a basic flow of doing all the things you have to do, right? Regardless of how much money you have coming in. And do you guys help with people having an understanding of, okay, what percentage? So of each dollar that comes in, what percentage should go towards the saving, the tithing, the investing, the giving, or how do you guys look at that? Yeah, I think, you know, there's obviously a lot of different opinions out there. They should say you should almost pay, you should only pay a certain percentage on your house. You should only pay a certain percentage of your cars, all those type of things. Um, you can get a lot of different opinions on that. Um, what we like to do is kind of make it a little bit simpler and kind of break it down. Uh, giving 10%, saving 10%, investing 10%, and then the rest, you know, that other 70% to live. It's kind of a basic principle. Like I said, you know, sometimes people can't start there. So maybe... That starting point is 1% or 5% for all those savings and investing in the giving portion. So it's kind of a case by case. But like I said, you know, it's important thing is start somewhere, no matter how small it is, that you get used to those typical or those basic fundamental principles of handling your money. And then so and then so money is easy was the first book. And then where, where did we go from? Where did we go from there? Sure. So here's the money is easy. That's the first one. Money is easy. What year this, did that come out? This came out just this year. Awesome. It's on Amazon, on Amazon as everything else. Uh, but this is kind of the main character, Money Mike, and he's a money tree. And then he's got <laughs> in his lease, he's got in base, invest, give, save, and tie. So those basic principles are within the tree. And we came up with that. I mean, I really got felt like I got a download from God about this whole series and these characters. But one of the things, you know, I was thinking about a tree. I was like, a tree? Why is a tree? I'm like, I keep seeing this tree. And then, you know, me and I started talking about it. You know, your parents always tell you, you know, like, hey, can I get a new bike? Can I get a new this? I'm like, what do you think? Money grows on trees? Yeah. And it's like, hey, yeah, Money Mike, the money tree. That's the guy, perfect guy to teach these kids about that. That's awesome. <laughs> exactly. So Money Mike is, you know, when you plant the seed, you're the you'll continually be in that flourishing place when you plant your tithe, save, invest, give. The second book, his girl is giving grace and she's a present because she's present to offer the different ways to give. And, you know, she works with, you know, Money Mike and they teach the two kids, you know, you know just the simple principles that govern increase through your giving like Charles was saying before, there's so many ways you can give your time, your resources, your love, your um, like when you were saying, people say, well, I don't have enough money to give. You would be surprised. There's a, a what you have, what people are amassing that they don't even realize the accumulation of wealth they actually have that they're sitting on. 
And when we were teaching 10 week courses, we had financial advisors that had storage rooms full of designer stuff. And they were just like, oh my God, like my eyes are open, sold all their stuff up, got out of debt like that. And these were financial advisors. Yeah. One at one financial advisor. Um, <laughs> But just, you know, you can forget, even if you're in the field and you are actually teaching other people or you're managing other people's money, you still can fall into a hyper consumption trap, which is really easy in our world today. Yeah. And then, so do we talk about that in the hyper consumption trap? Do we talk about that in the money is easy book or is that more in the giving is giving is easy book? I would say that's more in the stay out of debt with the loan shark, you know, talking loan shark. Oh yeah. Money and credit and so forth and uh, you know going back a little bit to the giving is easy is that one thing that we realized is that you know you don't have to teach a child how to hold on to something that's theirs I mean you can see it in an infant in a toddler it's like they got their toy and they're holding on to it so he tries to take it and they're like mine 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 you know you don't have to teach that to a kid it's like yeah. my stuff I'm gonna keep my stuff but what you do have to do is you have to teach them how to give and share and so, you know, it's an important principle. It's very, seems very basic, but that's why we did giving grace is the present. You know, people love to get presents. People, you know, on when you're receiving the present, there always has to be a giver of that you know, for that recipient. So that was something that we found was a very basic fundamental principle about giving that really needs to be installed in kids. You know, you have to teach them. Like I said, you, you really don't have to teach people how to be bad. You have to teach people how to be good. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's the same thing, you know, with handling our money all these different ways. It's like, you know, you just have to have the right principles, but they have to be installed, you know, early so that you start that way. And the more that you can start, the earlier you can start these kids, I think the better off they're going to be, you know, for their lifetime, but for future generations as well, too. And how do you go about communicating that in these books, communicating some of those principles of, okay, now in order to give or for someone to receive a present, there has to be someone to give the present. How do you, how do you go about laying that out in the book? You know, it's really what we did is we took kind of our 10 week financial curriculum that we did for the adults, which has a lot of moving parts, a lot of information. Each class was a couple hours. Um, so you're getting over 20 hours. We took that curriculum and we shrunk it. And we made it very simple and we used uh, illustrations with the characters as far as to teach that. So we kept it very, very simple, very basic. We use biblical uh, scriptures to back up what we're saying. And there's a glossary in the back that has those. And then we also use just some very basic uh, financial terms as well, too. And those terms are also in the back of the glossary as well, too. So the books were really intended not just to be a book that you hand your kids say, hey, Little, little Debbie, go in your room and read the book tonight. It's a tool, you know, for the parents to be able to engage with the children so that they can help use it as a tool to teach them. And what I always say, you know, with these books that, you know, if you're teaching your kids, you're going to learn something from these books too, regardless of, you know, what level you are with your finances. And Angel's giving you an example there. I mean, this is very simple. You know, it's not like the, the pages have 10 10 articles of text on there or something. And that's the glossary of terms in the back. So wherever you're at, whatever story page, you can go back there. So maybe the parent doesn't know a term, then they can go yeah. back and they can go through that. But that also becomes, you know, not just a book you read through one time and then you know it and you, you know, put it on the shelf, but it's something that you can study with those terms and with those scriptures as far as, you know, really getting into your, your kids. And the one thing that I was always amazed about when we were teaching those financial courses that when we have financial investors or wealth managers, they're like, what are these guys doing in here? What could I possibly teach a wealth manager? But every time we always had tests from those people about how much they got, it seemed like they got more out of the classes than other people, you know, got out of it. Yeah. So, you know, with that being said, the thing I was mentioning earlier is that parents are going to learn something from this as well, too. You know, and even if you know these things, it's the remembering or reminding yourself about some of these different things because you can kind of get off track, I think, a little bit on anything you're doing in life, whether it's eating right or exercising or handling your money. We always got to kind of be batting ourselves back into line. So, you know, this becomes a way as far as I think for the parents as a great reminder as well, too. I love it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go check it out. The money is easy one, the giving is grace, and then the loan shark. That's all yeah, three of them. Is. 
I do not have any kids currently, but I'll still check it out. And it'd be good gifts for clients with kids or even just, I don't know, any clients just that really want a, a version that's easier to read, easier to get through. Cause you have, what's your, like, what's your favorite finance book that you're recommending to an adult to learn about these types of concepts? Uh, one of my favorite ones is by Kenneth Copeland. He's a minister and it's the laws of prosperity. The laws of prosperity. Uh, Laws of Prosperity by Kenneth Copeland. And then obviously there's a lot of other you know ones out there that just talk about basic principles. Uh, but the Laws of Prosperity really, you know, is going to take and put, you know, the, the biblical look on handling finances as well. You know, a lot of people I think in the church don't think that, have this false perception that money is bad. You know, and money's not bad. Everybody needs money regardless. You know, I always tell people, well, if you're in the church and you ask people to pray for your finances or pray for you to get a job or to get a better job, then how could money be bad, you know? And yeah, the, what is it that people always say that the rich man going through the eye of the needle? What is it that yeah, people always awesome. use that? It's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of the needle than to get into heaven. The other one is too is that people say that money is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. and that's not what the Bible says. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. So it's the wrong relationship with money, you know, making money basically your god instead of making God your god, because God says over and over. You know, in the Bible that he wants to bless us. He wants us to be blessed to be a blessing. It said that Jesus became poor that we'd be made rich. So that's a whole another thing we could go down, uh, you know, right now. But, uh, you know, the point being is that God wants you to be rich. God wants you to be blessed. And but he also wants you to have, you know, the right relationship with that and to handle it and do it. And that's what some of the principles that we include in these books have. So really I I'd like to add to that. So there's four books. We've got Money is Easy, Giving is Easy, Saving is Easy with Saving Sam. He's the little pink pig. He's the third book that will be released at the end of the year. He's, the, then, he's the piggy bank. But he's, he's, yeah. he's, he's got an invisible stomach. You can see the money inside. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, Loan Shark, which is Say No to Debt. And that will be the fourth book that we're releasing. But the part of what you were saying earlier is uh, adding the scripture with the introduction to the financial vocabulary yeah. so that people understand the supernatural principles that govern increase. And that's kind of what the series is also tied up in. Like you were talking about the laws of prosperity and how do you get, people want to know, how do I have breakthrough? How do I get breakthrough? And like he's teaching it. Well, it's very, very simple. You just apply the simple steps. You can have faith all day long that you're going to be rich, but if you don't put any action behind your faith, faith that works is dead. You're not going to get anywhere in life. You mm -hmm. have to start doing it. You have to, like you were saying, even if it's small, if it's a dollar here, a dollar there, a dollar here, and then you build on that. And I love that because some people try to make it so hard, just like you were saying, dieting and exercising. Well, cut out donuts in the morning. Just Start somewhere. Take so one less bite. Take, you know <laughs> exactly. what I mean? Walk, uh, park the car in the parking lot and walk five more steps. Do you know what I mean? And just building Take those habits, step. building that rep reputation or repetition. Right. I do love the mindset shift too of saying it's easy instead of that it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Um, I, I do really like that. But you guys have changed that in the whole the mindset shift of it. And there's a there's an exercise that we like to do occasionally, um, a few times a year, I would say, we call it a money fast. And, you know, sometimes the church will say, oh, you know, they're doing like fasting from food or things like that. But what we like to do is fast from spending. And you will be surprised at how much money you save and how you go through your finances. Like you were saying earlier, it's not a, it's not a money making problem. It's a money spending problem. And, and how long would you do this, do this for fast one, for? For one month. Oh, wow. No, no eating out, no Amazon, no movies, no extracurricular, whatever. And you have found all kinds of crazy stuff. You're like, okay, whoa, what is this? Then you start going through and you realize, how many subscriptions do I have to these various like video platforms for watching movies? You <laughs> <That's know? A. laughs> and then you got a cable deal and you got something else that's like, and you follow, yeah, I always tell people facts, it's like, you're... you know, you can have two or three hundred dollars just in TV stuff and you never hardly watch TV. So, you know, what oh, you yeah. really utilize. So, you know, the money fast for us is basically just 
no entertainment, no eating out. Obviously, you're paying, you know, your bills and everything else. But I think what it does is it kind of lets you take a step back because, you know, that hyper consumption. I mean, it's easy for us. I mean, when you have enough money to do whatever you want, I mean, you can get out every night. <laughs> you know, it can be very easy yeah. to do that. We don't do that just because we like to eat in more. It's more healthy. But there's just certain things that you you do on a regular basis and, you know, you, you get into that flow of just not really paying a lot of attention. So, you know, I think that's And I'd important. imagine that would help a lot too with the gratitude for all the things you do have. So not only help from the financial standpoint of, okay, now I'm spending less for this month long fast, but then also you appreciate more of, oh, that is really nice when we get to go out to dinner on a Saturday or go here or go there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's you know, something that I always like to tell people when I hear them complaining about the United States or, you know, something so bad here. I always tell people, just go to a third world country for a weekend. That's it. I mean, we've been on, you know, mission trips for weeks, you know, to poverty stricken to Central Asia, South America, Mexico, all these places. And when you come back home, when you realize that you can take a shower when you want to, you can have electricity when you want to, because these places, the electricity goes out, you don't know when it's going to come back on or the water as well, too. You know, you, the loaf of bread that you get was just delivered to the corner with a guy riding a bike and he had the loaf of bread underneath <laughs> his armpit, you know, and there's no wrapping on it. And he puts it down and that's your dinner, you know, it's like oh, man. It's little things like that. And when you come back from those uh, environments, like you walk into your house, you're just like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's almost like overwhelming sometimes you nice. know, you come back <laughs> to your cars to your houses and stuff that people, you know, like you're saying, we just take for granted sometimes. So it can be a real eye opener. So kind of the money fast is kind of that same thing, you know, kind of teaches like, I really don't need to have to do that. You know, if, if you're working on saving more and investing more, it will kind of help you with, you know, having that mindset of some of those restrictions and being able to be more, uh, I guess, disciplined in those areas. I love it. I love it. And, and what would be the last takeaway that you'd want our listeners to leave with? Well, I would say, because I know you're talking to a vast audience that, you know, about money, you've got old money, new money, what's going on in our world right now. You know, the U.S. is continually getting to trillions of dollars of debt. And, you know, it's safe to say when you're born in the U.S., you are born into trillions of dollars of debt. So how do you break that cycle? It seems like like you're trapped, you know, <laughs> how do I get out? How do I get out of this prison? Um, but like you were just saying, we'll go to a third world country. You're really not in prison at all. In fact, you are blessed, but you also have choices and making the right choices, but also using your, your mind and your imagination and not being hung up on like, even the giving is easy. That's coming out right now. Yeah. Um, some people think, Oh, what a novel idea just to try to get more money from us. That is not it at all. There's a supernatural governing principle. If you give, it will open up a floodgate and things will start to happen for you because we have seen it, we've experienced it in our own lives and we have taught it and it has happened for other people. So if people can just understand that just the scriptures that back up prospering principles, they work. They worked for us. They have worked for our students. They have had breakthrough. And we're just here to share, to plant seeds and to children so that they can be a blessing to their children's children because it's so important right now for kids with all of the stuff in the world trying to get their attention and to get them off all these different tracks. There's so many different tracks right now. We need leaders to step up that can put governing principles in place that are going to prosper people and not, you know, not tear them down and not strip them away, but actually building communities, building, giving opportunities to people to bless other people. Like at the very beginning, what you said, we are blessed to be a blessing. And that is what the flow is. And we're here just to share the flow. You're blessed. He's your source to be a blessing and to continue to walk in that. And when you apply these principles of the four books to Money is easy, giving is easy, saving is easy, and say no to debt, you will be set up for success. Perfect. I, I love I would, it. I would it's add good. to that because I know we probably you know have listeners who, you know, believe in God, some who don't believe in God, some who are kind of in the betweens of that. And so my like I guess basic principle advice like you're asking would be to, you know, right now there's so much going on with our economy with inflation and recession and 
people are paying more for gas and food and rent and all these things and investments are going down if they're invested in the stock market and you can be overwhelmed and bombarded by the negative news every day. So what I like to tell people is, you know, if you're going to watch an hour of news, do a reciprocal of that of either reading a book. So maybe it's going and reading a book on finances. If you believe in God, then maybe it's, you know, watching some messages on some pastor talking about finances. Try to balance it out a little bit. And sometimes it's about you need to turn off the bad news and just turn on some good news. Listen to something good. Like I said, read a book that teaches about finances so that you're actually renewing your mind with that instead of just being bombarded because you're going to have what you what you hear. I mean, that's going to be your brain will start to manifest on that. And then you'll start to talk that stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know how I'm going to be able to pay my bills. You know, they're saying we're in a recession. We're in a depression. We're in a downturn. The investments are down. People just as they're as they're thinking that they're also speaking all that, too. So it's going back to what we talked about in the very beginning, you know, training a child as adults. We got to maintain ourselves. We got to maintain our training. We've got to. You know, just like if you're going to exercise, you know, your body, you got to do it pretty much every day or be consistent throughout the week. You just can't train for the first two months after you do your New Year's resolution and think the next 10 months you're going to be OK off of that two months of training. <laughs> you got to do it continually. And as we're bombarded by the news, as we're bombarded by social media, as all these things are coming at us, turn some of that stuff off and do something that good that's going to help your mind. It's going to help your what you're thinking. It's going to help what you're going to go, what you're going to say. And you'll see a difference in what's going on with your finances. I believe as well, too. It's beautiful. I love it. And where, where can people find you guys to learn more? Um, easiest way is to go to our website, our ministry website, which is toddworldwide.org. So if they go there, they'll be able to see the Money Mike books. We also have a YouTube channel. It's called The Abundant Life on YouTube, where we do uh, teachings on finances. Basically, it's about talking about living the good life that God's promised you, you know, and all the principles that go along with that. So we've got a number of different ways that we reach people to go to the our website, toddworldwide.org, and you can go from there, whichever direction you want to. Yeah. You know, we were bankrupt once. And we were divorced and then got remarried. So yes. we have to say about <laughs> how to manage your money and your relationships. So uh, that's what our uh, ministry is about. Yeah, there's awesome. you know, what I, what I kind of had a problem with sometimes in college was teacher, teachers or professors who were teaching on business or whatever the subject may be. And they had book knowledge, but they never had any knowledge actually mm -hmm. in the field or personally. Like, let me tell you how to start a business. Did you ever start a business? No. Yeah. Have you ever a business? <laughs> no. Have you always been an employee? Yes. How can this guy realistically really teach me the values with us? Not only have we, you know, gone through the various pastors that I've taught on it, we've sat down with wealth managers. We have very close friends that are wealth managers, our accounting firm that we talk with, and then all of our experiences that we had from being flat, busted, disgusted. We had no cars, no bank accounts, no place to live. I mean, I always tell people, if you had a job, you had more than we did. Like people say, we well, don't know how hard it is. You don't know what I'm going through right now. I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> we had I was like, you got a job? Yeah, I do. Well, you had more than me. You got a bank account? You had more than me. So yeah. from that place that we came and be able to build, you know, our profitable corporations, our foundations, all the things, there's been a lot of experience with that. But I think the other important thing is that we have a lot of compassion for people who go through those problems. That's really our heart through what we do now is our giving back is helping people in those situations. We know what it feels like. We don't want people to have to be there. There's no reason for people to have to be there. And most importantly, through the books, like we've talked about, start them early so kids can prosper their entire life. And they don't have to go through bankruptcy. Yeah. They don't have to be defeated in their finances. They don't have to have situations come up and they don't have any savings or anything. So they can just live a prosperous, blessed life their entire life. Amen. Thank you.